The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Now we come to uh, the next and third presenter. I'm delighted to uh, welcome Bibarado Ferrara. Okay. Thank you, Kay, for your nice introduction. And welcome, everybody. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want just to go back to a little background as a structural engineer where we are used uh, to design our structure according also to some serviceability criteria where crack opening control is relevant. And we also know that crack opening must be limited because of functionality requirement, because of durability requirements. And we also have in structures cracks which may open even before we apply the loads because of shrinkage, because of chemical reactions, because of other kinds of accidental events that we do not take explicitly the account in the calculation, so this crack may really impair the performance even before we apply the loads. Well, as a matter of fact, we do know, I just quoted some sentences from the Euro codes, but I do assume that in ACI 318 you have quite similar ones. We do know that we have to guarantee in our design that the structure for this is performance over a certain time, which is its service life, so we have to guarantee adequate durability. And as Design engineers, we may have many choices. For example, we may select two different materials which differ for the performance level. So we select material A, which guarantees with a certain uh, level the required strength, but we do also know that this material a long time will undergo some degradation. So at a certain time, we will need to have some repair of the structure in order to get back to the previous level of performance. We can also select a higher quality material. This could be the case of a regular well-done concrete or a high-performance concrete. The material is more expensive in the beginning, but we know that it is also more intrinsically durable, so the degradation time will be longer. The time for the first repair will occur later. And when we compare the costs, we will have an initially lower cost, obviously, for the lower quality material, but then summing up all the repairing costs, we will end up with a life cycle cost which could be higher than if we select a higher quality material with a higher initial cost but with a lower cost in the end. Well, this is quite important because finally in 2010, Ben was mentioning the FIB 2010 convention in Washington. There the FIB model code was presented and for the first time to my knowledge in a structural design code, among the fundamental requirements that have to be taken into account in design, there is the sustainability. So basically, if we design, let me go back to the previous slide. Oops. Okay. If we design as we are using now, we are basically putting a mortgage on the shoulders of future generations which have to fulfill the repair costs for the structure to guarantee its performance over the service life. So it will be very nice if we could have a material which is able to intrinsically repair itself. As soon as the degradation starts occurring, the material should be able to activate in some way some repairing reactions which immediately or over a reasonable short time get it back to the previous level of performance. And this should occur repeatedly a long time as long as any cause of degradation starts occurring. So basically, this will end up with a cost, which is the initial cost, but we will not have any further increase of cost a long time. Well, we can have different uh, reactions occurring. We can have only the closing of the crack, which gets back the material uh, impermeability to aggressive environments. We could also have some recovery of some kind of engineering and mechanical performance. And according to the definition of RIL MTC 221, we may have self-sealing or self-closing of the cracks and self-healing of the cracks. 
This can be due also to intrinsic cause, autogenic or autogenous cell filling, or can be also engineered through the addition of different kind of cell filling catalysts, we may call. Well, we can have different causes for cell filling. This is a, a picture, and uh, four have been identified, that I will call them A, B, C, D here, and explain here. So we can have calcium carbonate precipitation because of the reaction of CSH with the carbon dioxide. We may have some obstruction of the crack due to the transport of solid particles where the structure is exposed to flow of water. We can have, and this will be the cause of cell filling in HPFRCC, continued hydration of anhydrous cement clusters which upon cracking come to be exposed to water or to the moisture of the atmosphere. And we can also have swelling of the cement matrix when exposed to water or to moisture. Well, the problem is quite complicated because there are several variables governing it, the level of crack opening, the presence of sustained stress across the crack, so the combination of statical and environmental loading, the temperature of the water, the presence of other substances such as in the sponge with salt water that you were testing. As a matter of fact, a lot of studies have been done measuring the reduction of water permeability, but this, in this kind of experimental test, what do we have? We have that the crack is always in a water-saturated condition because what you measure is the flow of the water to the crack. We would also like to know if the material is able and to what extent it is able to self-fill when exposed to any other kind of environmental condition, which can be a moisture atmosphere, a marine environment, or any other kind of uh, environmental agents. And as a matter of fact, when using HPFRCC, when we do explicitly, for example, take into account the ability of the crack to, to transfer the stress, we would like to know how effective is this stress transfer and its magnitude a long time due to degradation and in case of self -healing. So basically, uh, I briefly just list here that among the self healing methodologies, there are encapsulation of chemicals, there are bacteria encapsulation, uh, chemicals in brittle glass tubes which break upon cracking, some kind of tailored mixtures, and the synergic effect of fibers which occur in HPFRCC, the fiber close the crack to very tight level, and the mix design characteristic guarantees this kind of autonomous cell filling. As a matter of fact, we had uh, HPFRCC we were using in Italy for different kind of projects, so the mix design is there, we had cement, high strand type of cement, we had slag, Water, low water binder ratio is about 0 0.18. Super plasticizer, fine sand, uh, sieved to 2 millimeter maximum aggregate diameter, and 100 kilos per cubic meter, so about 1.3% by volume, of short steel fibers, 13 millimeter long, and about 150 micron in diameter. We got the cube compressive strength ranging between 150 and 108 MPA. And as a matter of fact, this material is self-leveling. So we wanted also to take profit of this self-leveling ability to align the crack along the flow direction and in case this flow direction coinciding with the stress direction applied during loading. So we built up this kind of small shoot in order to favor the alignment of the fibers along the flow. You can see the good uh, performance in the fresh state that we had. And as a matter of fact, from the slab, we cast the slabs which were one meter long by half a meter wide. We cut some beams with their longitudinal axis is either parallel to the flow or orthogonal to the flow, so that the fibers were aligned to the tensile stress or orthogonal to it. And then we tested in four-point bending according to the setup which is shown here in the picture. We had these loading applied devices. We measured the crack opening across the wall, constant bending moment region in the center of the specimen. The slabs were about 25 millimeter, one inch thick. So if we tested the slab with the fibers orthogonal to the stress direction, we had fibers who were aligned in an unfavorable manner. So basically, we had in our bending test a clear cracking point about MPA. This is a nominal fractural stress, so this is not the direct tensile constitutive relationship, it's just nominal bending stress versus crack opening. After we had a sudden stress release and then this good toughness of the material. But basically we formed just one crack. So this is the same material, but because of the alignment of the fibers, actually was strain softening fiber reinforced concrete. But if the fibers are aligned in the right way, we had fibers parallel to the stress, 
You see, we got a clear deflection hardening behavior. We performed some back analysis and some tension tests, and we had also a strain hardening behavior. In this case, the maximum bending stress was about 25 MPa. The maximum tensile stress was about 10 to 12 MPa with a strain capacity up to more than 1%. But what we got uh, in the central uh, 200 millimeter uh, region of the specimen, we got 12 cracks. So basically, the cracks were spaced about 15 millimeters, which is quite close to the length of the fibers. Since the COD that we measure here is the sum of the opening of all the cracks, we can imagine that up to 2 millimeter, for example, 2.5 millimeter when we got the peak, each of these cracks was maximum open at about 200 microns. So basically what we decided to do, well, we pre-cracked the specimen. In the case of the strain softening behavior, we decided to pre-crack at half millimeter, 0 0.5. Why this crack opening? Because in the model code 2010, in the chapter dedicated to the design of fiber reinforced concrete, 0 0.5 millimeter is the crack opening level for serviceability limit state. So we decided to take this. We put in water, and after one, three, six months, the six months test have been done just last week, so we have specimens still waiting in water up to one year and more. We retested the specimen up to the failure. And we got a result like this. You see, the black curves are the pre-cracking curves. I cannot see the pointer. Okay. And the blue curves are the curves that we were able to measure after the conditioning in water and the failure test. So we could see that after one month, basically, we got back about to the same stress level that we had before pre-cracking. But if we go to three months exposure, when we pre-cracked and unloaded the specimen to put them in water, we went to this. Okay, you could see that we pre-cracked at this level, and so when we tested back after three months, we went up to this. So we had a clear increase of the load bearing capacity, which also occurred Oops, pardon, when we tested the specimen after six months exposure. So we decided a very simple criteria to try a quantitative evaluation of this self-filling ability just to compare this stress drop that we had here from the flexural tensile stress at pre-cracking to the unloading value of the stress with this stress gain that we had after unloading post-exposure. So we defined this self-filling stress gain index and you could see after one month, after two months, three months, and after six months for deflection softening specimen. In the case of deflection hardening specimen, we decided to investigate different levels of crack opening. One millimeter, two millimeter, and 0 0.5 millimeter after the peak. One millimeter and two millimeter, because of the multiple cracks, they basically correspond to about 100 microns and 200 microns for each single crack. Whereas 0 0.5 millimeter after the peak means that that is the opening, the additional opening of the single localized crack that opens after the peak when you go down into the softening regime. And so you could see these are some results after, for the one millimeter crack opening. This was our reference specimen, which for some reason had some lower performance, so it's much more interesting to compare them in dimensionless quantities. So this is the untreated specimen, after one month you get to this response, after three months you get to this response here. So you have clearly, with reference to the same uh, pre-cracking level, an increase of both the load bearing capacity but also of the ductility because the peak stress will occur at this crack opening level for a monotonically loaded specimen up to failure instantaneously but also increases when you expose it in water. And the same happens for the specimens pre-cracked at, at two millimeters. This is the reference. We had one month, basically nothing changes. After three months, we have this. After six months, we have this response. Oh, sorry, there is some rustering here of the symbols. The diamonds are one month, the triangles three, and the circle are six. And even in the case where the specimen was loaded after the peak, so we had a quite wide, single, open, localized crack, we had some capacity of the material to undergo some stress gain and some ductility gain after exposure in water. So we decided also in this case, this is a preliminary analysis, a preliminary reduction of the results, we decided to uh, try to quantify this effect of self-healing, so just to see what kind of strength reserve, in a sense, we could have between the pre-cracking level and the peak level for the monotonically loaded specimen, and how does this change 
when we pre-correct the specimen, put it in water, and retest up to failure, obviously using a normalizing factor to take into account the actual strength of each single specimen that we studied. And also we decided to compare the ductility gain that we have measuring the difference between the COD at the peak with respect to the unloading level for the treated and post-conditioned specimen and for the virgin one. And we had results like this. For example, one-month specimens, this is the one millimeter pre-cracking, this is the two millimeter pre-cracking, this is for specimen pre-cracked up to the peak. So we, you can see that, for example, the two millimeter pre-cracking, initially they have a lower performance, but as you go on with the exposure, the performance becomes better. The recovery of the performance, the healing becomes better. You have a wider crack, you have a higher possibility of exposing to the environment, to the water, a higher number of anhydrous cement clusters which can further hydrate along the exposure time. And the same happens for the ductility recovery, whereas you can see if you go with pre-cracking after the peak, the performance stays almost constant because you basically have already consumed all the resources of the material in the pre-cracking stage. And these are some pictures showing how this cell feeling evolved. These are the same specimen before and after the treatment in water. This was pre-cracked after the peak. You could see that the crack starts filling after one month, after three months, after six months, looks like almost closer. This was a deflection hardening specimen. This was a deflection softening specimen. After three months, the crack is completely closed after six months. And you can also see in this case as the fibers, the, they were fiber crossing the crack as the fiber act like a deposit catalyst for the self-healing product. This could also be interesting. We had not started investigating this, but for example, there were some concerns. You expressed some about the, the, the corrosion of the fibers when exposed in water or any kind of atmosphere. Well, in this case, it may happen, I do not know, but it may happen that the self-healing products depositing along the fiber, they also guarantee it a protection against delayed corrosion. Well, uh, so just coming up to the conclusion, we know that HPFRCC have an intrinsic potential to self-heal because of their peculiar mixed composition and because of the crack tightening effect due to the fibers. We have developed a simple experimental methodology based on conventional four-point bending tests for fiber-reinforced composite through which we can evaluate quantitatively these effects of self-healing. And the early conclusions seem to say that cracks up to 0.5 millimeter, which is the serviceability limit state for fiber reinforced concrete structure, can be completely self-healed when exposed to a highly uh, moist to water environment. And in the case of deflection hardening behavior, we can have both the recovery of the load bearing capacity, but also of the ductility properties of the material. Well, now we have started a quite comprehensive project in which we want to investigate the effect of the age of pre-cracking. All these results refer to an HPFRC which was cast, stayed one month in the moist room and six months in lab environment. So it was quite old. The, cr the pre-cracking was done after six months. So all the hydration reaction normally occurring were done. So now we are wanting to investigate also the effect of pre-cracking age trying to investigate different exposure conditions in humid or dry environment, wet and dry cycles, some kind of aggressive exposure uh, like uh, water, salt water and so on. And also trying to combine, this is a project which is currently ongoing with the uh, Universidad Federal de Rio de Janeiro, uh, combining the steel fibers with some kind of natural fibers which can act as super absorbent polymers because they can absorb water and release upon time providing the water for further hydration. Obviously, all this kind of research needs a lot of collaboration, so I want to acknowledge the work of my PhD student, Bizar Kalani, and PhD student visiting from Rio, and a good team of master students working with me, and I want to thank you for your attention. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What type of application do you see this concrete? Well, any kind of structure which is in contact with water or soil containing water, this could be, or any kind of protective repair application that you can think of. 
actually we start having the first results, for example, in open air in northern Italy, northern Italy climate, which is quite humid. And in that case, also we had some kind of good self-healing capacity. So the reason for developing the comprehensive project with all other kind of exposure conditions was right for this, to explore different kind of conditions for different kind of application, because in this case, we had continuous contact with water, which only limits it to some kind of application where you can have this kind of condition. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, the material forming around the steel fiber crossing the crack is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any further thoughts about what is happening there? Or how you might study that? Well, we are doing now some um, um, SEM analysis also to detect the, the composition, and it seems like that is the same of CSH, the, the, the hydration products of the uh, cement, because basically this is delayed hydration of cement, and the fiber only act as a deposit place for these hydration products which go to fill the crack. Yeah, but, uh, I just came in a few minutes ago, so you okay. have this. Uh, did you uh, uh, investigate the effect of flowing water to cracks on the cell healing? No, not yet, but in the, not yet. Well, in, in this case, we regularly changed the water, so it was not water staying there for six months because you can have different concentration of the substances which go there. Not continuously flowing. We had regularly change of water. Yeah, not to do. But this is another exposure condition that you can uh, investigate, yeah, for sure. May I ask you yeah. another question? So have I right it's understood you have pretty loaded the specimen yeah. to crack up to 0.5 millimeter, and then you unload it, put it in the water. Yeah. Have you measured the crack width when it's unloaded? Yeah. Yeah, it, it was about the same. So, yeah, 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 yeah. The unloading was quite vertical. So, it was about the same, yeah. And then a follow-up question. So, what do you think, how many times can the cell healing occur? Well, well it, this is another thing we are planning to investigate, a sort of healing fatigue. So, you crack, put in water, take it out after three months, re-crack up to a certain level, re-put in water. This is an important issue to consider because you may have repeated loadings, and so we want to see also how effective this healing under a fatigue type of uh, loading. We call it healing fatigue because you are basically repeatedly stressing the healed cracks to go back and forth to the same conditions, yeah. Right. Last question, and then we move on. Do you have an explanation why this is Well, it's really, in this case, with the 0.18 water binder ratio, you do not hydrate, or you hydrate very few part of the cement. So there is anhydrous cement. Filled with the solution material again? Yeah. It, 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 the SEM analysis <laughs> showed that the composition is basically coincident with that of the hydrated cement. So you have anhydrous cement which hydrates back as soon as it comes in contact with water. So did you compare the self-healed specimen with one that was originally six months old? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Six months old. Yeah, we, we compared it, so with the, this, okay, for, okay, these are simply representative curves just to distinguish them, but this was a six-month-old specimen tested up to failure and throw it away, and this was tested, pre-cracked, put in water, and then retested after exposure. Why was the six months old? Oh, this was just a case of different castings that we had. So, but uh, that, that was, and in fact, in our evaluation, we normalize it by the actual strength that we measure for each specimen. Yeah, because in order to cast all the specimen, we did different castings in the day. So that was really just a random case that it came out in that way. Thank you. So, if you have further questions. I would uh, invite you to discuss after this session. Okay, thank you, so thank much. you very much.